Hey guys, it is, as of the recording of this video, three days until Prime Day. You know on Prime Day, there are going to be a lot of things on sale. I think last Prime Day, I got Crimson Val booster boxes. I believe they were set booster boxes for $60 a box. I also got Midnight Hunt for like $40, $50 a box, set boxes. And I picked up some uh, more Baldur's Gate, even though I already have like infinite supply of that. So how will your local game store, who has overhead, compete against all of that? Remember, uh, the booster box. So now we have play boosters, and then we also have, what is it called? The draft boot. Okay, what's it called? The dollar booster? It's something stupid. But it's a booster that could possibly not have any rares in it, because that's what we all want, right? A booster pack where you can't even get a rare or a mythic guaranteed. And then we have collector boxes. I mean, it's all just a mess. Uh, I will I will go ahead and tell you why. You know, we looked at the numbers really, really hard. I have every inkling to want to open a game store after uh, my significant other gives birth, uh, mainly to sell things really, really cheap and get rid of it from my home. Uh, it is taking a lot of space in my home, and I'm paying a lot of storage fees. And I kind of uh, don't want to do that anymore. So I was going to just discount everything and fire sell it. And it should have been, uh, given the discounts I was going to do on it, probably it would have sold within six months the entire inventory. The Pokemon I would have kept. I have a shit ton of Evolving Sky that just like goes up. At, every, day, every day I click the little button and it goes up in price. But that's neither here nor there. A game store is not in the business of holding product. A game store, when Evolving Skies comes out, they need to sell Evolving Skies for as much money as they can possibly get. And that's the same for any Magic Core. The retail store will say that if you were to buy an item for $100, your goal should be $140 or a 40% markup. This is the minimal for things like sneakers or Tim's or if you want to know clothing their markup is closer to 70-80%. And in the high inventory markets like uh, groceries, for instance, the markup is 10-20% to 20 because they're hoping to sell it very quickly. Sell this pile of bananas, put in a new pile of bananas, sell those with a minimal losses of waste. But for something in retail like a Funko figure or an anime t-shirt or an anime wallet... Uh, you're looking for 40%. Now, why cards are different? I'm going to just do Magic. If you want me to do Pokemon, you can do Pokemon too. In the Odin, Odin days, you would buy a box from your distributor for $80. And then you would try to sell it for $100. You might be like, oh, well, that's not a 40% uh, markup. That's a 25% markup. And this was during the best of times for Magic the Gathering. So this 25% markup was 10, 12, 15 years ago. Magic's still doing really well, um, not as well as it's doing today, but you could easily buy a box for 80, sell it for 100. You didn't have collector boxes, set boxes, drop, but you just had one box. Very easy to do, very easy to understand, 25% markup. You might say, okay, well, you told me that the markup needs to be 40%. Why in Magic the Gathering is 25%? Why would stores decide to carry it? Well, because you also get uh, residual sales from accessories. So when you sell a Funko figure, there's maybe like a Funko guard. I don't, I don't know what type of accessory you really have. But when you sell a Funko figure, there's not many add-ons, right? If you sell a Magic Gathering deck, you can sell some sleeves, some play mats. You can sell some food when they play there. There's other stuff like food, for instance often has a margin of anywhere between 70%. Um, I guess the 40, 40 to 70% is kind of where your local game store would be making on food. So for a bottle of water, you know, let's say a 24 pack costs uh, $6. So it's about 25 cents a bottle of water. They can easily sell that bottle of water for a dollar. Easily. So they could have a margin of 400%. Uh, is that correct? Uh, 75, 300%, a 300% margin. So things like that, like, and, and, you know, magic players, often they will buy one box, two boxes, a case, uh, they often get addicted. So you're okay 
even though our target is 40% for most items, like Funko figures, action figures, comic books, whatever, comic books might be different because you have a retention model. But our, model, our ideal model for retail is 40%. However, because Magic is the way it is, back in the day, we had many, many successful stores. I've been able to run my store really well because even though it's a 25% markup, everything else that we sell, water, Coca-Cola, you know, when you sell a can of Coke for a dollar, you're making 300% margin on that as well. Uh, when you sell a sneakers bar or a candy or something like that, in a lot of places today, now they do cafes, right? They do cafes. They sell coffee for six, seven. Now, there's a place in Coral Sword. I can actually probably tell you um, a little bit more about this because this is a very successful uh, thing they had. It's an incredibly successful model, business model. Is uh, let's see, where's the? Let's do drinks. Do you want to do drinks? Um, okay, view menu. I hope they will like, okay, so uh, for instance, cafe latte is $4.50 to $5. French fries is $4. Mozzarella sticks is $8. Chicken tenders is $8 for seven ounces. Pour over drip coffee is three fifty. dollars Code brew is $5 to $5.75. Cafe latte, $4.50, $500, uh, or $5. Nitro Thai tea, $5 to $6. House iced tea, three fifty to four. Uh, Coca Cola, okay, co a can of Coca Cola at Coral Shore in Houston is two seventy nine. Now we have inflation. Uh, it probably costs maybe thirty cents. It, it's probably a m massive. St. Arnold's root beer, liquid death, uh, ghost energy drink. Uh, here we have baked goods. We have a kolache cheddar, kolache jalapeno. We have a cochant. We have uh, packaged food. Brownie gluten free is free seventy nine. A chocolate chip cookie is free twenty nine. Chicken tenders is eight dollars. French fries four dollars. Personal pizza, um, pepperoni. I guess a lot of this stuff is uh, sold out. But anyway, you can kind of understand that in all reality, that's how they're going to make money. But now we're in a system where everyone and their mother, I think grandmother is on YouTube is offering a subscription, a Patreon model, where if you give me $10, $20, $40 a month, I will let you buy $100 a month uh, is the top tier of alpha investments. You can, you too can buy at the prices I buy at with a little bit more for shipping. And that's kind of killing the local game store if you will. If everyone can buy the local game store prices or if Amazon, theoretically during Amazon Prime Day, just absolutely obliterates you on prices, then how the F are you going to make money on 25? You don't even have 25. You don't have no margins. So you have to rely a lot heavier on these other higher end margins, which tend to be food and supplies and gameplay, community gameplay, right? If you have that. We, I actually know a lot about opening a card shop because uh, I also own a marketing agency as well. So we've looked at these numbers from top and bottom, top and bottom. If there ever was a time that we have a $100 box that we buy for 80 we would do really, really well. Those times have gone. Uh, the margins are actually negative now on Magic product. And now you your focus has to be entirely on food. So instead of having food at a 300% profit margin, you need to have it at a 500% or greater profit margin to exist if you have a cafe. Anyway, just some interesting stuff. Bye, guys.